Hey guys, welcome back to Large Scale RC Nation. This is your host, Brandon. Today we're going to be working on part two of Bag C. We're on step four in our manual, and we're going to be installing our bushings and our brake cams. Here you can see the orientation of the cams installed on the center diff mount. Make sure that you have this orientation set up when doing your install. Please note the orientation of the center mount and the brake cams. So we will now need a two millimeter with our set screw, which is gonna be the larger ones in the package. And we're gonna place these right inside here. You're gonna face these upright. And we'll just get it snug because we're going to have to measure this. We will zero out our caliper. So let's go ahead and measure three, and then we're gonna lock it in. Okay. Now we're just gonna loosen that just enough to push it in. So we got our three. Make sure that it is uh, vertical and go ahead and lock it in. And we're going to do the same for the other side. We're just pushing this until they touch, which is right there. We got our three millimeters, straight up and down, tighten it. All right, so as you can see, we got our three millimeters on both sides sticking out from the edge. We're gonna place this to the side and now we're gonna be working on step C5, which is gonna include the rest of our linkage so let's go ahead and open up that bag, get all our hardware, our servo horn, our throttle rod, and let's get to building. So we'll start with our throttle linkage, which we'll need that bent rod, two collars, two of these little small set screws, a 1.5 millimeter hex driver or Allen wrench. We're gonna need our spring and part of our throttle linkage. We're gonna start by putting some blue Loctite onto our set screws, our grub screws, and go ahead and just get these started into the collars. We need just a little bit. Just to run that in there until you can just start to see the thread go through and then back it off one. And we'll do that for both of them. Once again, this is a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Just a little bit of Loctite. Spread it around. Okay, and now we're just going to piece this all together. So we're going to run one of our collars onto the rod. Next is going to be our spring. And then we're going to place it in this orientation. And then our last collar. And this is how it should look. So from the edge of the rod to the beginning of the collar is gonna be 3.3 .3 
So let's go ahead and zero this out. And we're gonna go to three, three. Lock in our screw. All right, so as you can see, we got 3.3 right here on the edge. We're gonna place it against the rod and then just run the collar against right there and lock in that set screw. Now we're gonna be measuring outside to outside of the two collars. And this is gonna be 51.8. Okay, we now have 51.8 on our caliper. And we're gonna go outside to outside. Make sure it's nice and straight. And then go ahead and tighten that up. Okay, and this is how it should look. So in your small package of hardware, uh, you're gonna need one of your washers, one of the nylock nuts, and the smaller of the two button head bolts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our nylock nut inside of this black plastic preset. Line it up and drop it in. And now you're gonna place your washer onto your button head screw. On the longer side, we're gonna run, hold your thumb on the lock nut. We're gonna put on the longer side of the horn and then go ahead and run your hardware in and tighten that up. Two millimeter. And go ahead and get that nice and tight as there's enough room on there and it will swivel so just verify that it swivels and now we're going to be working on our brake linkage now for our brake linkage rods both of these are the same size and so are the thumb screws um, so we're going to go ahead and measure and place these onto our rods and lock them down with our set screws once we get our measurements. So same thing, we're gonna prep these with some blue Loctite and go ahead and get those started. It's also gonna be a 1.5 millimeter with your grub screw and place some blue Loctite on these as well. Just a little bit, run it around the threads and just get that started into that thumb screw. Do that for both of them. And now we're gonna measure these using our caliper. So our first one is gonna be 46 millimeters. So let's go ahead and get this kind of snug so it's not sliding around. So our first one is gonna be at 46 millimeters. So we're gonna go from the bottom of the threaded rod to the outside edge of the collar. So we're just gonna Get that touching and we're at 46 millimeters and go ahead and tighten up that grub screw. Okay, so we're at 46 there. Our second one's gonna be at 33. Lock that in. And we're just gonna run this until it touches the end of the rod right there. Pushing the rod against it and up against this. Go ahead and lock that in at 33. And now we have these both prepped ready to go. So pay attention to the orientation here. You're gonna have the threaded collar your shorter one that's closer to the threads. Here's your longer one. And you're gonna make sure that you place it on this side with this preset nut hole facing upward and this down. So pay attention to the orientation, otherwise you're gonna to have to redo this. 
and the length from the thread to the plastic, which you're gonna measure with your caliper SO, that's gonna be 1.5 millimeter. So you're just gonna make sure that the thread and your caliper touch to the plastic. And then once you're done there, we're gonna move on to the larger one. So we're gonna thread this one into the other side and you just gotta push and thread it in nice and straight. This one's gonna be hanging out 3.5 millimeters on the rear. So you can go ahead and get your digital caliper set to three and a half. And once the two are touching, then you can set it there at three and a half millimeters. So what I'm doing is I have it set for three and a half millimeters and I'm just threading it. And then once I can see that it's touching, which you can see there's a gap, just keep threading it until it gets closer and closer. And then you can just adjust it once you get to the very end of it. Okay, and here you can see we're touching at three and a half. And this is what it will look like once you're completed with this section. So now we will take our nylon lock nut and place it inside of our linkage. This will sit on top of the servo. We're gonna flip it over, run our washer and our other button head screw, which is a three mil by 20 millimeter. And then you're gonna take your two millimeter Allen wrench and get that nice and tight. So now that we have it tightened all the way down, what I like to do is get it nice and tight and you can see that it's not moving freely like this side is, correct? So what we're gonna do is back off this screw, half a turn at a time, and now you can see it moves nice and freely. This will let the servo work nice and easy, it won't overwork it, and we're good to go on this part. So now we're gonna move on to the next step so you want to verify that you have it in the correct orientation that these tabs are facing away from you, which is going to go towards the engine. And this will be your servo side. And you're going to place it through as so. And then we're going to take these nice little round black collars right here and place these on the end of each of the rods with the flat side facing away from you. And then we're going to run these clear piece of tubing. And then we're going to do our collars as well. We're going to run our blue Loctite on the set screws and get those ready to go on. All right, so we're just going to place these blue collars right at the edge of the rods on both sides. Make it nice and flush, and then tighten it down. All right, nice and flush, tighten it down. Okay, and this is how it should look. All right, guys, we're gonna be now working on step seven in our manual. So we will need our two side mounts of our center diff and bag C3. So let's go ahead and open this now. Put the disc brakes to the side and the hardware. And we're gonna be mounting our disc brakes onto our center diffs. So let's go ahead and start with that. So to set the orientation, what you're gonna to need to do is there's a rounded edge right here. Those are gonna face outward and inward. You're gonna see these little indentations for your nylon lock nuts. So those will face inward towards each other. So let's go ahead and start with one side and we'll install these. 
You're gonna take two of your brake pad screws and run it onto a brake pad with the pad facing up towards you. Next, you're gonna put a spring on both sides and then take your next brake pad and face it towards the other pad. And we'll do that for both of them. Now what we're gonna do is put our nylon lock nuts inside of our center dip holder. So go ahead and pop these in. So now what we'll do is you're gonna take the contour side of the brake pad and match it up with this hole right here. Go ahead and stick it through the plastic. All right, now that we have our locking nuts in the back and we have the pad ready to go, go ahead and start tightening them down. Place your finger on the back of the nut to hold it in. And this is a three millimeter. And same with the other side. Just verify before you tighten them all the way down that your brake pad is up over the top of the brake pad screw before tightening it all the way down. All right, we'll do the same for the other side. This one's ready to go. So another way of doing it to makes it a little bit easier is go ahead and stick your brake pads inside first. Take one of your nuts and just get it started on the screw for both of them. And you wanna make sure, like I said, that the brake pad is up over on top of the screw and it's not pressed in between and you'll know because it won't hang out now that you got it started it will go ahead and pop right in the hole instead of trying to fight and fighting those to get in there Once again, that your brake pad is not in between the two. Just pull it up over. And then once you feel it get tight, it's done. Now you do want to verify that they do move freely on both sides. All right, those are good to go. We will now need bag C3-1. And we're gonna install our brake pads with our center differential. And the way we're gonna do this is there's a lift up side that's gonna face towards the center diff. And you're gonna place these on both sides inside the brake pad and we'll hold it. So once you have it held, you're gonna take your uh, side with the spur gear and run that through. And you're gonna line up the out drive with the disc brake. And then you'll do that with the other side as well. Okay. Now we have to do is just install the top piece and this will hold this all together. So what happens essentially is your brake cams, they will be inward. And when you pull your brake, these will spread outward, which is gonna apply pressure to the inner brake pad. And it's gonna pinch your disc brakes, which will allow it to stop. So just make sure that you kind of push those in And then you will line up the holes 
All right, snapped on top, good to go. So now we're gonna take our center diff engine mesh plate and place that on top on the side that has your spur gear and we're gonna mount our hardware. This is gonna take the M5 by 16 millimeter of your button heads, which are gonna be your two longer ones. And then your M5 by 10 millimeters will go on the other side. And make sure you don't over tighten as we're going into plastic. This will be your three millimeter. And we'll just get those started. Just get it to where they're snug. You'll feel it stop once you get them all nice and snug. Right, and that's it. So here is how it will look. Verify that everything runs nice and smoothly. Here's a view of this side, the top, the side. All right, now it's time to mount this into the car. All right, so when mounting your center diff setup, your um, mesh plate is gonna go towards the center or the rear of the car. You're gonna place the center drive shaft into our out drive, and then line up your holes. And this will take the remaining hardware with a four millimeter and go ahead and enter these four bolts into the bottom of the car. So these will be your four mounting holes. We'll get these started and I'll throw this onto a timer. Thank you for watching. This concludes bag C. Next, we'll be moving on to bag D. Thank you guys for following along. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, smash that thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.